So the music video for Spring to Come is a stop motion animation using illustrated paper cutouts. There were over 330 individual illustrations produced for the clip and they were all created by the very talented illustrator Snip Green. And once he'd finished all the illustrations they then had to be cut out by hand using scalpels which was a very um, time consuming process in itself. And then they were all constructed into their final forms and some of them, such as you know, the characters and the animals, uh, had to be um, made using movable joints uh, so that they could be posed in various positions to be animated in each scene, which took about two months in total. So the concept for the clip was inspired by the title of the track and also the mood and the feel of the song. And basically the story is about this earthbound spirit who is searching for his wife called Spring. And he's wandering through um, this landscape which is changing um, throughout the seasons. Also within the story there are these life cycles that are going on and they're a great visual element for the clip and serve as a backdrop for the main character. But I also think that they represent the fact that perhaps death isn't the final thing and you know in the end we all return to the earth but um, life keeps on going and we're all connected and part of that you know, larger cycle of life. Today I'm animating Ravens for the John Butler Trio music video. Um, it's all cut out sections so that I can move the wings and the claws and, and the body around. I've been doing some flight cycles and also some uh, other ravens who are kind of like picking at a carcass on the ground and they're all um, done on a, on a green background so I can composite them in later. Uh, into the scene that I want them to be in. So this guy's going to be standing on a a, um, a tombstone and then he flies off. If there's something I could give I would have given it before now cause So these are the hands for the scene where the main character sort of unfurls his hands. There's one shot where it's a close-up of his hands and they uh, open up. Uh, it's actually sandwiched in between um, a piece of uh, flashing, a roof flashing, so I can bend the fingers and they stay in position. Yeah, these are all the other elements um, that I've been cutting out that um, Snip has illustrated. Uh, here's a moth and a caterpillar. Uh, this is really cool. That's the cocoon. So a lot of cutting with scalpels and intricate little sort of details that need to be cut out. So this is the animation stand and it's basically some steel shelving that uh, I've got four pieces of perspex that I can um, layer. Um, so what that means is I can separate out the different elements. So I've got the background, um, middle ground, foreground and then a fourth layer. It enables me to animate all these pieces of paper separately um, and so that they're separated so they're not just a flat piece of paper with other bits of paper on top of them, they're actually separated so hopefully it creates a bit of depth. At the moment my aim is to shoot 10 to 12 seconds a day of animation uh, just to make sure I get it done in time uh, which is quite challenging because it's a very time consuming process doing everything frame by frame um, and especially working with paper it's quite um, fiddly in terms of um, the material being used so yeah it's, um, it's a challenge but you know the results are really good. Doing stop motion it's all about problem solving each shot it's all uh, you gotta figure out how you're gonna do it and what's going to work and, and solve the problem. So, yeah, it's a challenge, but I, I like the finished result and I like the look of the handmade aesthetic.